Hey, what's up, guys? It's Simon here with the Card Guys, here with Isaiah, Neil, Craig, and Cam. Uh, we're going to be starting a new podcast, and this is episode one. Um, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things on this podcast, from cards to events. Um, just remember, we have a TCG Player affiliate link down below. If you're purchasing cards of any card game, sealed products, supplies, whatever, feel free to use it. It's at no cost to you and just helps us out a little bit. Um, if you use it, it just helps us keep continuing the product projects that you like seeing from us, whether it be the podcast, deck text, any of the above. Um, so like I said, today we're going to be starting a podcast. we got a couple of different things to talk about. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to be talking about is the new reveals from the Extra Booster, I believe it's called, that releases in March of 2021. Uh, this Extra Booster has a bunch of different things from support for old archetypes to new cards entirely and reprints. Um, what are your overall thoughts on it, Cam? I want to hear your thoughts first because you seem like you're itching to talk about this. Thanks. Uh... Overall, I think, because I have some pulled up on my screen. Um, first off, I know that the launch comment is definitely going to have some favorites, especially on the team. Uh, but I overall think that it's interesting. Um, one thing that definitely popped out to me is the Vegeta's lineage subtext mm -hmm. that we now see. Uh, the Android 16, I think, is a very interesting leader. I think it's definitely going to be something that not will revamp the meta per se, but kind of give life into that old archetype because ever since, I think it was ever since the 21 got banned um, due to the restrictions on design that yeah. it caused, uh, it can, it kind of gives it a little bit of resurgence because I know a lot of people did actually enjoy that deck and the way it played and yeah. kind of like that ramp style. Um, and people then... I think the next one was the, as they called the the waifu deck. I think it's the Balma leader. <laughs> it's the like, heroin support. The heroin support. Um, that's interesting. I really want to see how that what comes out for reveals, and how that can affect because overall the leader looks very lackluster in my opinion. The leader but, looks really good. The support looks lackluster. I Let's mean, see it, maybe it's just like me. I don't find the appeal of the leader. Um, but I, I'd have to see more than what comes out to it. And then obviously you got all of these reprints that are coming out in this too. Like the Vegeta explaining weakness, the Obuni, the Rodians, the Basils. Um, and then obviously, because I think they're using the set one art for Sensu Bean, which is going to have a foil now, right? I believe that that... They haven't said that all the cards would be foil. They said that there would be a parallel foil treatment. I'm assuming that it will end up being like the recent sets where everything has an alternate foil art. I hope it's not like Draft Box 6 where only the rares and higher were in foil. Um, mm. Because foil sensu beans are still really expensive. And just like having more options for players to get art that they like in foil is always a good thing. I'm not especially sure with that where OG I saw too, because that's a lot of nostalgia, especially for people who started when the game was in set one. Because any deck when it plays blue definitely plays Sensu Bean, and once you can get the OG art foil, it definitely can add a lot of. I like to say a lot of bling to the deck. Like yeah. as someone that picked up the alt art Sensu Beans because it was the only foil that there was, uh, it'll be it'll be cool to pick these up because while they'll still hold a price tag when they come out. It's. I don't think they'll be that expensive, to be honest with you. No, I Could think you, they'll be pretty affordable. Could you imagine if they did them with the uh, art style of 10, 11, and 12, where it's the full art? Oh, the text box? Well, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. I saw a picture that the reprint is going to be the original art, but it's going to be the new full art style where the text box is like almost mm. completely gone. No, because. Yeah. Because I was looking at it, I'm, and I'm I'm sitting here thinking, it's like, hold on, like that looks at like the original art, but it looks kind of different. Like, what's different? It's like, oh, I can see like the whole like like pop on the on the bag of the sensu mm -hmm. beam because the the text box is in there. I thought that was really really cool. That's awesome. So Simon, you remember one of the cards mm -hmm. that you linked the other day? I don't think we can talk about other card games on here, but the card itself was a textless full art card. Yeah. And it was really cool because you know what the card does. And you can always go to the Oracle text for the card yeah. for whatever the game is. 
wouldn't that be awesome for iconic cards like Senzu Bean, Nimbus? Like, you don't have any text. It's just whatever the art is. Bam. Like, yeah, I would love if Dragon Ball oh. did that. Like, the uh, the extended, like, the lack of the border, like, the foils from set 10, 11, and 12 already looks superb. But if they started doing, like, iconic extra cards, like, that didn't really need text that just have yep. a simple effect, like, having that be, like, a completely textless card, that would look amazing. But Bandai's already done a really good job at improving the foils recently. Like, oh, yeah. set 10, 11, and 12 foils just knock every other pack foil out of the water. Like, the set 9 and before were fine they were a little bit muted for my taste if that makes sense for the foils but i think 10 11 and 12 foils they're vibrant they pop they look amazing i think bandai's been doing a really good job recently on the foil process it beats our shatter get shatter foils <laughs> nah, shatter uh, we foils don't, don't want to get into shatter foil <laughs> um honestly hey, hey, and as i said the one can. that the one that kind of popped out to me was the King Vegeta the insubordinate, the one with the Virginia's v- Virginia's Oh yeah v- Vegeta's lineage? Because <laughs> that just opens up so much. Like where are you going with this? How so does that we mean we're gonna get Tarble? Uh Dude. so before we kind of go into like to the Tarble, the one thing that people gotta notice about this uh this card too, it it's has awesome. a rival red green for no free energy. for free. Zero cost. Yeah. Zero cost. So not only is that cool, but it's also a two drop, correct? So it can be played with the reprint King Vegeta field, like the reboot field, and with yeah. the leader. So you can set it up on, on turn two for the turn three play if you don't have the arrival. Like, I'm really excited to see what that package has because King Vegeta is a personal favorite of mine. I love that deck. I played it at regionals before. I would love to be able to see some, uh, like, another breath of fresh air put into the archetype, especially because they're reprint or they're making the new green Broly stuff, the OG Broly stuff, alongside side the new field so i feel like this red green king vegeta support will also be pretty decent that broly that. Is it's, good. it's one drop is... and the four drop broly or just ugh. i hope they do like a like a reboot like og broly leader because with all the new support like that's all it needs at this point is a revamp mm-hmm. leader just they, they round to, it all together in a 90 dollar box with a reboot <laughs> no, no, re- that that's, no that's a reprint not a reboot we'll Whoa. talk about the collector box later there's we'll get there time. there's still time but the thing is, <laughs> is that this... this is what i like about this card because overall the design of this card to me for someone that's played other well, obviously everyone here has had experience with other card games but the design of this card is just so well thought out mm-hmm. so obviously you have the tapped land effect with the energy exhaust but the fact that it's unique it has a free cost, so you you don't have to worry about paying its its uh, energy. The fact that it has swap, which we all know can be a mechanic that can bust open any door. That it's tied to a Red Saiyan card for the leader, which mm-hmm. there are plenty of them out there. The effect is what I like. When you play it, choose one, choose up to one, so you can choose zero. And it gets minus 5k for the turn, but you can't play copies of it. So it's, it's, its effect has been made decent by its limitations. So mm-hmm. it doesn't seem busted because we all know that one drop Bardock was insane that they had to ban it. Yeah. And yeah. they tried so hard. So I think they've just the been, it's like really, really good, like design choice because, like, they starting to realize like free cards that you can just constantly keep playing, like, not necessarily the same copy uh, mm-hmm. itself, but just, like they learn from U3 where you start seeing a lot more card skills yeah. saying you can't play copies of this card for the turn, like hard ones per turn type effects. Yeah. Like, the, the counterplays in Sat 10 are really similar because they're free, but they come with a cost, like the unison tied ones, where they're free, but you can't use counterplays for the rest of the turn. There's some cost attached to them um, where it's not just insanely broken to play them, and there's no reason why you would never play four of the card. Like, there there is a drawback for a very strong effect. Now, my question is, is there a card in red and green that can bounce back cards? Um, there's the red Khalif or Kefla that bounces back a U6s Any- or aliens. Yeah, but anything with alien, anything with alien. 
Alien. Yeah, um, it's from Draftbox Four, but or is I it can't Universe. Think... See, uh, I can't remember. It's a, it's Alien. Okay. The reason why I'm saying is that because of its ability and not being able to play copies for the turn, right? Already swap, we know and how the mechanic works. Um, you can kind of bounce it back and forth and be like, okay, so swap into this on my turn, go to your turn, combo, arrival for free, pop a 5k, or pop, neg something 5k. Uh, I was just trying to see if there was any way where you can, if you don't have a swap target, you can kind of get it back to your hand if needed, or just some like well, you can, interactions. You can, you can still declare. bounce it back without a target, right? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. how swap can work. You can say, I don't, I'm not swapping into anything. But what I'm trying to get at is just some other ways to manipulate the board and manipulate your hand. The only card that I can think of is um is the Hercule Boo. Mm. Uh, but outside of that, I don't think there's really anything else like specifically catered to red that bounces it back to hand. Bouncing is a blue mechanic. I really yeah. A part of me really wants to get insane amount of jank involved and see because of the fact that it's a saiyan and king vegeta we can start messing with yellow and all of that 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 one pop-up deck that was like that was uh the apes the great apes mm -hmm. that made all oh. Saiyan cards oh. and the red and yellow cards. king vegeta yeah. deck. so we we've already know that you can do tricolor because we saw how tricolor janemba worked out and that being able to splash anything about it but I think that it would be such a neat interaction if that deck could come to fruition because of the fact that you can start really playing around with the fact that you can start playing with the combo costs. And now no longer is this card a swap, take it out, and now you're sitting here with a 1 10k. You're sitting here with a zero cost 10k that you could just use. That's neat. The King Vegeta is too yellow to evolve, so that could be tricky, but definitely something we can play around with. I yeah. mean, you can you could definitely do it. You can play. You have the uh, the red yellow King Vegeta or whatever that I forget that if that was the one I'm thinking of. Whereas the uh, the arrival one, the from arrival Draft one, Four. yeah, the arrival one. You could play that too. It's still a red energy, so you can use it. But you know, it it offers its advantages and disadvantages as well. Yeah. While the deck can seem very clunky, the concept is there. It just needs a lot of work. So uh, let's just let's just hope that none of these new cards um, have support tied behind tournament kits, because we know that tournament kits have had a bunch of issues recently with the allocation on them. Uh, I think a lot of the community has a lot of grievances with how tournament kits are currently distributed, how the cards are acquired, um, the power level of the cards in them. Craig, I know you've been playing about the same time as most of us, but I know you have some really strong opinions on tournament kits and how they should be structured as a longtime card game player with experience from like prize packs from other games. Um, so let's hear your thoughts on tournament kits because I know a lot of people have differing takes on them. Yeah, I mean, I come from a plethora of card game knowledge background, however you want to call it. And like biggest ones were ones that the tournament kits were alternate arts like entry was an alternate art this card or deck boxes and then the winner of said kit got more alternate arts but there was like you know one specific one so how we have the judge packs inside there or now we have the winner cards well there oh, was yeah. one or two cards in there that was for the winner but all it was was a full art reprint of a functional card inside the set magic does it or i, I is probably should you say can other talk about games, other but, stuff it doesn't yeah. matter so like magic world of warcraft most of those card games do not have tournament specific promos where any player is required to go to said event to gain access to said powerful card mm -hmm. the card itself is always in the product so you could open a sealed pack and pull that card it just would not be at you know whatever rarity level that you've got now now do and, you think Oh, that there, do you think that there is an upside, though, to having specific cards cut, tied behind the tournament packs? I know that people in the past have said that it helps increase tournament attendance. It helps players come out and actually have a reason to play. Um, I personally feel that in the state that we live in, where in-store play is somewhat suspended in plenty of states due to COVID and different restrictions, um, I 
I've expressed this to you guys before, where I didn't think the tournament kits were an issue in sets 9, 8, or 7. There were powerful cards in them sometimes, like the tournament kit nine had like instinctive reprisal, the blue red invoker negate. It had the Jiren for the U11 support. It had good cards that were like deck relevant. Right, but it, one was, or two. it was easy to access them just because there was a large quantity of events being played. I think the current issue is that there's not enough allocation to the stores to get into the hands of players because there's not as many in-person events. Now, Bandai can't control the amount of in-person events, but yeah. I feel like they could probably like tone back a little bit on the power level or the number of tournament promo cards that there are. Yes, the number is ridiculously crazy. So, like, when I first started, what were there, maybe 10 in a tournament kit? Now, mm. how many do we have? Uh, I mean, it's like 12. It's a, it's a there were some of them, like some of the uh, the one that had the World Martial Art Tournament bonus cards that had the the Mutaito and all those were twenty five or that something was, like that. That was that was completely different. That that that's that was a whole like they were trying to that was revival. support. Yeah, yeah that was what I'm saying is like they need to they need to bring that number down. So if you're going to continue having tournament kits with specific cards that you can't get anywhere else other than these tournament kits, like bring the number down. Um, look at the. Number, the the five yeah. cards that they had, what in 2019, the the Vegeta time regulator, the combo. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, those aren't, but those aren't tournament kits, right? Oh yeah, those yeah, those were, un but I mean, it's still the same but instance with like promos and stuff, because like right now, if you look at like the actual main website and just type in or what the series is and put promotional cards, there's 18 pages of individual cards. It's a lot. Like, and granted, yeah, some of these are like, um, you know, some of the little uh, kind of special edition kind of cards and, and stuff like that. There are a couple like obvious like stamp promos and stuff like that on there and judge promos. But the fact that we have 18 full pages of promos is ridiculous issue. for a game that's only been out like for three and know, a half years, yeah, right? a little bit over three years now. And, and it's harder I to get see. new players in the game because of these tournaments. Because once these tournaments promos run out for whatever particular set, they're gone. And you have to basically get them in the secondary market. That be easier said than or, done. Yeah, or like, we have to wait for like the reprints and stuff like that, yeah. which like they're re like I think what Craig was saying was right, because I came from Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, with like the OTS. Uh, they were great. Yeah, OTS packs, all they do is just it's three cards per pack. You get a common, like two commons and a rare or two commons and a super or two commons and an ultimate or something mm -hmm. like that. So like they could have done like a common reprint of like some weird SR that might be good or a common reprint of a of a promo card. And then gave us like an SPR Senzu Bean or something like that, mm -hmm. which, you know, could, you know, that could bring people in because they'll be able to get either their promo or they can get an SPR version of something like maybe Weiss's Coercion or Senzu Bean or, you know, whatever card that, you know, they wanted to put in it as a reprint. Most I people can't tell like you. shiny special cards. That's the easiest way. Shiny <laughs> oh, special yeah. cards. I can't tell you how many right, times... Right. I can't tell you how many times that I've tried to get new players into the game and they'll tell me, I want to play Majin Buu. How can I play Majin Buu? I was like, okay, well, you're going to need this promo ability to unleash Son Gohan, but, you know, he's like $40, but uh, that's pretty much the only way to play. And they were, oh, okay, well, I guess I just won't play the game then. And it happens like so many times. It's like, it just, just pick a random deck. It probably needs a, like an expensive promo and it just makes it yep. harder for new new players to get in the game. And it just... Well, look at the most recent one. Look at Red Broly. Like, I mean, sure, that's was... the most recent one, but I'm saying like as an example, like since set three, that's just been an issue. Science I mean, has always been... Yeah. Science man. Science $25 man. <laughs> science man. Yeah, four, everyone four, everyone four, played it. I remember. First attack I remember when I They were playing. 20 when oh, I that, got in. Or that, that, that's what it meant. Or, first uh, attack. It's the other one, yeah. but either well, way, it was like, even the uh, the four drop green Gohan when like that thing was like eighty dollars a pop. Oh uh, like, yeah, I remember yeah. that one. It was like, GTS I mean, drafts. Oh my yeah. gosh! But so see, funny. <laughs> say they took say they took some of the iconic cards and you made them as alternate art or full art foils or whatever, and you put it in the tournament kit. I mean, most people like deck boxes. The deck boxes we got in the tournament kits were okay. They just needed to be bigger. 
Mm-hmm. Like you need yeah. to be able to put a full 65, 70 cards in that thing plus your leader. Right now they hold a 50 card deck. That's it. With so, leaves. With leaves. So it seems like all of us are in agreement that like alternate art or promotional or downshifted or upshifted rarities is really the way to go with tournament kits. To me, it sounds a lot like I know we're going to be changing topics here, but like the collector box or whatever Bandai announced that is the reprint and alternate arts of a bunch of popular slash expensive cards. Um, for example, I believe there's the Green Broly Leader, there's the Fuse of Masu Deity's Wrath from Draft Box 4, there's the Draw 2 Goku oh. Ape from Draft Box 4. Yeah. There's Kid Goo! So, Kid yeah. Yeah. But one of the things that uh, that's also really interesting about this and what I think... Blue, yellow, Goku, black. Like, <laughs> it is. Uh, even the green Zamasu, Fuse Zamasu is in there. Uh, but like I said, one of the one of the things that's really cool and unique about this uh, this thing, and why I personally bought one, maybe two or three, uh, <laughs> was because all of these cards are going to have the secret rare silver stamped. Like, no, they're not, uh, are they? Yeah, they're going to have the secret really? rare uh, silver stamp plus special treatments that like the arcane absorption Majin Buu. So the uh, set six secret rares, um, they're going to have uh, that type of rarity on them. It's like embossed. Yeah. Like it's a, uh, if you go to like the actual webpage, um, I'll try to link it in our uh, Facebook group real quick. Um, if you go to the actual webpage itself and scroll down, uh, it shows that like uh, cards featured glorious silver stamp plus special treatments silver foil and stunning texture make these ultimate collector items interesting so i i actually have a question for you cam because you're a judge and you're one of the more talked about judges or you go to a lot of events so people tend to know you um how do you think that alternate art reprints have affected judging if that makes sense because sometimes i know some players that only know certain cards like by their artwork do you think that the newer artwork might be confusing for newer players do you think that that would cause any judge issues where a player is confused about a card's effect because they don't recognize it and they're wondering how their opponent's playing the same card but different artwork do you think that that could ever come up in a tournament or do you think that that's a non-factor can you give me an example of what you're trying to get asked so for example there is the the anniversary box let's just use that as an example okay. there's the broly crown of retribution right that had a really popular tournament pack printing back in last january and then it had an alternate printing artwork in i guess it was the summer sometimes i've had issues with this happen at locals it, it happened with dragon radar when it got the reprint there were some players that didn't know the effects of certain cards because they were used to the specific artwork. Um, I am not saying I saw this happen, but I saw some people maybe misinterpret how their cards worked or try to confuse newer players with the effect because they tried to say that it was like a different or a newer card and the player took them at face value. Um, Do you think that that would ever happen in a tournament setting realistically with alternate art reprints do you think that anybody would be trying to do that to take advantage of someone well i'm gonna say right now if you're trying to take advantage of someone based on the fact of how they memorize cards you're a scumbag and that you should know that for face value itself however and i'll, and I'll say that plain straight to, to anyone's face i i don't care but from a judge's perspective I'll, if you if you were to look at cards that i've received as uh you know judge promotional items um every card that has been used has had the original artwork. Mm-hmm. So for example, the more popular ones that everyone knows um, <clears throat> are the, the sparking the gates. Yeah. After image dimension, magic, power burst, time magic, and uh, shocking death ball. Um, believe it or not, what, and I'll get into that because it's a whole different story, but it was the same artwork. Now, if someone chooses to, make a make a remembrance in their mind about a card's certain effect based on their um based on the artwork then that's how they're going to remember it now i will tell anyone that goes to it because locals is one thing locals is 
where you go to learn. So, you know, if there are scummy people doing it at locals, then karma's gonna karma's just gonna find you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you go to major events, I tell any player, I've I've talked to many people who went to Nats in 2019, you know, the last Nats event we had. Yeah. Anyone who went to a major event. And I've explained to them that you as a player have so much power in the game that you're playing because you have every right to, if a card's being played, call a judge over and ask for clarification on this card and what it does. Thank you him. don't even need to know. And you could, you could be an English major mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I know this for it's exactly what it's supposed to do. You call a judge and say, could you pull up the official Bandai text for this card? A judge will do it. It's like if you were to have go to a magic tournament and say, can I get the oracle text for this card? What the card actually does. They will give you the oracle text. There was a discussion recently in the judge group I where they had a question regarding if you if players should be allowed to ask what a card does if the card's not being played in the game. My answer is yes. Now, if if I were if I was playing against Kid Koo and I was just kind of mulling it over and I go, Judge, can you give me the text for four star ball? And he hasn't played it. Oh, why is this card applicable? Oh, he's playing it in this deck. I forgot what it does. I'd like to remember what it does, please. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to say. The judge should give you that answer. Because you're not asking for any strategic plays. You're not asking if he plays four star ball, could I do this? Because that's coaching. Yeah. He's you're asking for information. You're right as a player is to get that information. If a judge is withholding that information from you, that's an awful judge. The other co- the other topic was does a DQ uh does a, a disqualification mean that you forfeit all your prizing? I said yes. But I feel like that's almost unanimous. If you purposely get yeah. disqualified from an event, your prizing is forfeit. No, um, you no prize. Yeah, exa- bye. No prize for you. Um, but I, I feel that it doesn't set down to alt art because alt art creates a chase and mm-hmm. a FOMO effect in the TCG community of the fear of missing out. So it's a way for them to gain revenue, and that's mm-hmm. and that's how they're going to do it. Um, if someone, t- if someone learns a card based on the artwork and they just are able to do set muscle memory, then that's how they remember. If someone takes advantage of that and tries to manipulate it, then that's on that other person who's being a scumbag and doing it themselves. Going back to this design, this collector set, because I know this is where it all comes from and starts, yeah. is that I don't mind this being done because mm-hmm. this is a great product for this community. Honestly. $90, while steep as it may be, is decent because it's a collector's edition. You're gaining it for the collector value. My biggest gripe with this is that they made a mistake making it pre-order only through the Bandai website, not doing it through any locals or distributor type right. basis. And- you should do it through the distributor, go through locals. You can do, you can you should sell it at Bandai sponsored events if when we start doing it. Your one of the issues because of COVID, there are a lot of LGSs that have either closed up shop or just are not doing any kind of business whatsoever. So that has restricted a lot of player base. And it goes back to the tournament kit stuff. You have LGSs that either A, do not have it anymore, or B, are just not open because of COVID. And therefore, you can't get that product. So this way, I think Bandai's idea for this is, we're going to put this on this website. We are making it accessible by every single player out there. If Which I would have... Fine. It's fine. But if you're going to do that, then my issue is that now it's so limited, it doesn't give people a chance. Because I, I feel that they, if, if for this type of card game, being three and a half years in, if you're doing an, a promotional base item with a pre-order type concept... I think it's too early in the game to do so. We are um, not at a point in this game for three and a half years in where you need a collector's edition box. However, is it welcomed? Absolutely. What we they should what they should do is do this type of release and then have physical copies available at large scale Bandai tournaments when they come back. 
One, so uh... if, if you go in person, like if we, when, when we have another nationals again, they should have the vendors be selling this in a limited quantity. Yeah. Uh, one thing about this also is the pre-order for like the limited part is actually only for the U.S. Uh, in the U.K., if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken, I think they posted it on their Facebook. Um, the U, the U.K. and or Europe or whatever, they're actually going to be able to get this through LGSs. Yep, and Australia. I heard that too. That they're not actually getting it pre-ordered through the website. It'll actually be through the LGSs, which I agree is a good thing. I think the um, which I think the mul- also be more like logistic logistics things and stuff like okay, that. Aren't there? Aren't there- Fewer, I would assume, fewer LGSs in the European and Australian communities than there are in the States. Y- yes, and But the no. States are just so big that you really can't yeah. compare it. Um, and a, you can also travel a lot easier yeah. in, like, European countries through, like, you know, public transportation is definitely used a lot more in other countries in comparison to, to us. Also, border regulations from traveling between country yeah. to country is so much easier. Yeah. And so, here's the other thing, too, that I find interesting. There's not a restriction on pre-orders. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, for $90 of a, $90 a collectors, I can select up to 30 Yeah, and one of the too. things, like, uh, one, of, like the, one of the biggest issues that I don't like about this, well, in a sense of, like, time frame, is the fact that they announced this, what, last week, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. With random. Yeah, they announced this last week, and you have until Valentine's Day to get <laughs> I saw that. So you have three a weeks. Lot of time. So you better not have a boo, because yeah. if you don't, if you have a boo, then you ain't getting whoa, 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 whoa. it. My boo yeah. love me. She gonna buy me one of those for Valentine's Day. She gonna get kisses. Where's Goodwin at? He gonna get kisses. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, I want to talk about the price for a second because I know a lot of people were complaining about this price when they first saw it. They saw the ninety dollar price tag. Kid, I, I just want to talk about this. I feel like a lot of people that are complaining about the price tag aren't looking at this in like a logistical sense. There's eighteen cards in the set. Eighteen divided by um ninety no. divided by eighteen is five. <laughs> the average price per card is five dollars. If you think that all of these cards are going to be under $5, then it's not worth it to you. That's fine. If you think on average they're going to be $5 or over, you're going to be making a profit monetarily and probably like happiness-wise by buying these cards. Like it's a solid deal. Like not a ton of these cards are currently playable in the meta. Um there's a lot of just really fan favorite cards that got reprinted, but like yeah. the but the have- alternate arts Go ahead. You have, Blake, you're not even factoring the fact that there's the the instinct apes. Sand, five $4. drops five Sand drops instinct, of Masu. Fifty dollars. Instincts. The, the, the barrier drop, Goku. Yep. SSB Sun Goku. Excuse me. Biokin, all Goku the Black attackers. Unforeseen Darkness. Yep. All of the ninety dollars. Like like the, the and value... one of e- and one of each uh like IARs. Yeah. Like they all all every single one of them shot up to at least ten dollars a piece. And they're all gonna have se- like secret rare printings. They're, they're getting so they're much value. Crop. Now I gotta go buy some. Yeah, I need yeah. to buy some too. <laughs> hey, Cam, <laughs> when you need your next, for, I think when you need your next creatine jug, let me know. I'll buy yours from you. Five bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! I got a stack of unopened judge packs, and I will give them to you at this point. <laughs> um, let's uh, that's let's, another uh, thing I want to tack on, but I'm not gonna. I, 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 I we, can, night, we can discuss yeah. it if we have the time, but I want to touch on that. So let's let's just do a little cool thing. Do you guys have a favorite art that has a new reprint? Have you guys looked and do you have a favorite out of all the ones that they reprint? In, really in, in the collector's edition. Janemba, 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 Janemba. <laughs> I'm sorry. That leader is my baby. That leader was the leader that carried me through the 2019 season. It carried me. Um, I looking... literally had to do nothing as a player, and I won. Being honest with you, even though like obviously the Kid Ku reprint like was is amazing. Um, looking at all of the designs, the Vegeta uh, attack rear is probably my I favorite. I agree. That one is really gorgeous. 
I, I uh, yeah, I think that one or the uh, the Super Baby. Uh, that one's might cool be. too. I personally like how the heartfelt plea looks. I like that we're getting a third heartfelt plea art. Um, we'll have the SPR, the regular one in this one. I think they all have merit, but I think this one with the silver, with the yellow and red will look really nice. But I also really like how the um, concentrated concentrated destruction Kaioken Goku looks. I think that one looks really cool too. I think that all of them, I think they knocked the like the ball out of the park with all the arts they're iconic cards they're fan favorite cards they're powerful cards they it, they're at least one of those out of all of them i feel like um, my favorite yeah, actually yeah. the set one broly yeah the really the cool leader. pose yeah yeah, yeah. i mean oh. look as i said janemba's gonna stick home with me for all like <laughs> I, it will and no one can tell me otherwise one it's of the okay. ones that you need a helmet Look, I won the Chicago team re the uh, Chicago team celebrations with Janemba. I just loved that deck entirely. I topped the Niagara Regional with that leader playing Tricolor. The leader was just fun. No one's ever going to hear that from any other player with a sane mentality, <laughs> but it was fun. Because it was an alternate win con. Alternate win That's cons. That's what cool. people don't like in this game is you have an alternate win con. I think if hack. you can beat your opponent without Aye. touching their life, <laughs> if you can beat your opponent without touching their life, they are going to rage quit. Dirtle, so, dirtle, dirtle. so one of one of the cool things about the leaders with the alternate arts means that pretty much every game unless there is an alternate wing con at play, you're going to be able to see the art. And I think that's what makes the art appealing for a lot of these leaders. They picked yeah. fan favorite characters and fan favorite leaders. So the people that get those leaders are going to be able to see it every game and really, really like it. I think that's why the leader, the alt arts, kind of like how they did for the, was it the Mirac Mi yeah, Miraculous the, decks the, the, last the year? Yeah. The Gogeta and the Broly. Oh, yes. Those things were yeah. so good. They, those are really nice. I really love the Absolutely alternate art sick. leaders. I think they're great. Um, but like I said, unless it's like an alternate wing con, like Invoker or Janemba, sometimes you're not going to see that backside. Yeah. Um, that's why people don't, that's why people wanted, um, that's why people wanted the original victory strike to be hit. Because yeah. they don't like losing. They just want, they want the game that interaction, but they're not used to other win cons. Yeah. Right. And, and I get that because of how novice the game is right now, especially being at three and a half years in. But, you know, alternate win cons are valued, and yeah. it, it, it makes the game interesting. And, and let people play the way that they want to play. Well, what happened after Janemba became into fruition? The only other mill leader we saw was Cooler. Hey. Now hey. we're seeing other leaders with this mill type effect. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it pop up, but we haven't seen it again in huge numbers. Yeah. And it's annoying, and that's annoying to me because I want to see the game develop to a point where you can play other deck styles that don't necessarily have to deal with hitting your opponent's life. Which is why I personally love Invoker. I think that deck is great. People think it's annoying to play against, but it's an alternate win con. <laughs> Isaiah, <laughs> so, so let, let's awesome. let's talk about Invoker for a little it's bit because kill. In, Invoker does cause a lot of feelings for people i remember specifically after a i think it was a case tournament in set nine i believe isaiah's exact quote was this format is garbage i'm not playing until they ban invoker do you guys remember that he I said that after that. got catastrophic blowed from like five to zero pretty much every game um but in invoker does make a lot of people upset uh it won the ppg event this past weekend um, Legends that was, is an insane player he, he is an insane yeah, he player was, he is actually the one i lost to at that event too uh, really it's hilarious same hey yeah. he, he's been training this whole time um let's let's talk about that ppg event Using us actually. Punching bag. <laughs> um the invoker won turles came in second the meta felt like a pretty decent overall spread I know a lot of people were expecting Red Broly going into it. Uh, they they were expecting a triangle almost of Red Broly, Mecha Frieza, Dark Broly. Uh, the top cut only had one Red Broly, and it had a decent amount of yellow and, of Mecha Frieza and Dark Broly. 
but there were a couple of rogue decks in top 16 too. I know Craig made it in with the red green aggro launch. I believe Butters made it in with Clash Q. He made it in with Green Clash Q. Um, Dylan Warren, I think his name was, made it in with the Sin Shenron Yellow. Um, another person on Gamers, I can't remember his name, he made it in with Reboot Gohan. Uh, Jason um, Scott. Jason yeah. Scott, yeah. Um, so, like, th- there was a pretty decent overall meta. Um, I know probably... I don't have a lot of experience in this meta. I don't think Cam's played a lot. Uh, but you three, uh, talking to Neil, Isaiah, and Craig, you guys have probably played the most out of all of us. How do you feel about the set 12 meta? Um, let's do it with or without tournament kits. I don't care if you have an opinion. Uh, I know some decks do get a little bit better with them. Um, do you guys think that this is a healthy meta? Do you guys think it's pretty balanced? Do you yeah. think it's... Open. Like the only thing that may be like, even though it didn't win, Mecca is on the verge in terms of like what it can do of of being like Mecca is literally the best deck. I'll tell mm-hmm. like even though Dark Broly took the most slots, Invoker won, Turles got second. Like if you sat and you actually watched everybody play, Mecca legitimately was like the best deck um definitely has I, the high ceiling yeah for sure like well ex- the, discounting yeah, like, poker like if you put mecca in the hands of a lot more good players yeah it'll probably be the good players because rios was the one that was playing red broly mm-hmm. but like that deck is absolutely insane like it, it probably has like a weird dark broly matchup because they don't run a lot of battle cards mm-hmm. uh from personal experience it's, it's yeah like they don't run yeah. a lot of battle like, cards to be able to has a lot of control 30. but yeah you can only survive so many 30 yeah they have to pretty much like beat face look at some of the players that had it that went three and two so like markle went three and two bubbled out I mean, we know that guy is one of the best players in the game. I yeah, mean, clearly he's done, he's done absolutely great things with what he's done in all the formats. Give that man time with it to really sit down and dial in the matches. And because, I mean, oh, for that, sure. that, that format, you still had to find the cards. Like, that was the crazy thing is, is like yeah. the Mecha Frieza leader came out like right before that event. So one, you yeah. had to try and find the cards. Two, you had to make sure that the build that you wanted to play, again, you found the cards for. And then three, you could practice against the field. And the field's always moving because people were trying to find cards. You didn't know what was. With the game only being three years old and we have a limited card pool, like you're sitting here and you're trying to figure out how to build Mecha. There's so many avenues that you can build it. It is ridiculous. And well, if you, were, of, uh, you have to, and I have to be careful with all the yellow extra cards moving forward because that leader's gonna be like, hey, yeah, thanks. yeah. And to piggyback off, you said someone that I think that could have piloted that deck really well, but just I don't think had enough reps with the deck and didn't have the time as a good player was Marquise. He is, yeah, he huge. literally picked that deck up that day. I that, remember he, he, he picked it day before. He a bunch of crap in the Twitch <laughs> chat for it, and I understand he was playing against. I think it was Sin Shenron. I, yeah. I get that a lot of people like to to give that guy a bunch of you know nonsense, but let's be real here. He, you let's pick let's let's look at it this way. The deck that he had the most reps on, U six Cabo. Look at what he did with that deck. Look at how much he topped. When the leader was considered not good, he still topped with it. He still showed that that U6 archetype was insane because he had reps and knowledge of the deck. Take that information, take that knowledge and put it towards Mecha. If I think he maybe had like a week to prepare with that deck and just maybe sling it for a little bit, I guarantee he would have topped. Yeah, uh, he did top. I mean, he yeah. lost, I believe. Sorry, in... so, you, sorry, you know what I mean. Yeah. He would have yeah. he 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 maybe he had a better showing. Yeah, like um, in a lot of things too, like people with red broly a lot of people wanted to like say that the promo was expensive like red broly right now is literally one of the cheapest decks you can build uh-huh. like mecha frieza is literally right now like almost a 300 hundred dollar deck and that's just me guessing off the top it's draft box the most expensive deck. cards found yeah. in that deck it's the selzino 
Zeno okay, for what? Well, if, if we if we take Cell Zeno out of the mix, because like that card right now is yeah. just ridiculous. We have um, the draft box basils, which are like twenty five yep, a piece, twenty getting eight. reprinted. Yeah, basils, draft box Bergamos, you getting have, reprinted. You have the Lord Slugs. You may have the or the Angelas. Yep. You have you have literally the all Bardock the cards. Apes. Bardock Vegeta Apes. Final Flash is like ten bucks. Like, Final Flashes, it, it, uh, giant balls, all of yeah. That so, yeah, because like Red Broly, blows. Red Broly is it's built within set eleven, right? Like it has its commons, its uncommons, its rares, its SRs, its promos, its secret rare. Yeah, it's pretty much a set. Two cards out of like draft box six, and that's the Piccolo Unison and the Piccolo card that free plays if you have a Unison. King Piccolo. And, that's it. and after that is just regular staples, Bardock, maybe some Negus. Yeah, but it, if if you compare choice. it to if you compare it to Mecha, Mecha's like good stuff. Dot deck. It reminds me of the blue yellow Broly apes from Nationals last year, nope. where you played the best cards for each, like for the colors you were playing. You didn't play like an engine that had the different rarities. Pretty much every card you bought was going to have some sort of price tag on it, and Mecha's a lot like that. I don't think it'll end up being like gating people out of playing Mecha. Mm-hmm. Um, we forgot U9 Assemble, which is like a fifteen dollar rare. Um, yeah. forgot that that was also a thing um, I don't think the price will like gatekeep people from playing Mecha because the people that want to play it will play it and it is getting some reprints in the time soon yeah. um, but it is Red Broly is pretty cheap all things considered I actually like that comparison but the deck it reminds me of is Dredgeku yeah <laughs> Dude, how like that deck was like at the time the ribriands themselves were 110 dollars a piece the ribriands the roshis were relatively yep. expensive at the time too yep. you still had to sell attack rares dormant potential like, baby 133 dollars this week oh, Jesus <laughs> i want to tell y'all about thing another couple we can talk about that, that later oh every deck that we've seen do well has a set theme and that's what keeps them at a fresh and rotating when you see mm-hmm. a good stuff deck that's when the community gets pissed off. Yeah. Nationals, no one wanted to watch stream matches because it was all tricolor Broly. No one wanted to, no one really, like, sure, Mecha is a good stuff deck, but it's, it's, I feel like it's different. I feel people are watching the Mecha matchup because Mecha as itself was such a, is a, like, nostalgia leader because they mm-hmm. rebooted it. Yeah. But no one wanted to watch Clash Coup matches. Yeah. No one no. wanted to watch any of that stuff because Clash Coup was was that early 2020? Hmm. The, no. Yeah, was I remember middle. the PPG Invitational. They had Clash Coup. Clash Coup was um, You're not talking or, about no, Dredge Coup? Clash of Fates Goku. It was like the... No, that Clash, Clash of Fates, Fates Goku was like, from that side set with the with the Frieza leader. From, uh, and the, Theme Booster 3, Clash of Fates. Yeah. Yeah, that was from a theme 2019. Like 2019, yeah. It was January so, 2019. But it was, it was Dredge Coup was when the deck was like yeah. insane. Yeah, yeah that, that's but a different Goku just, leader. But yeah, that was set 10. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying that the concept behind it is that it, it doesn't make for good... Honestly, it doesn't make for good publicity or content. When you get good stuff dot deck, people just don't find the need to play. There's going to be people that want to play it because good stuff dot deck leads to it's a good. lot of creative yeah. deck building. Because you can play and see what works with everything. Mm-hmm. But people want to play this game where it's like, oh, I just bought set 12. What am I going to play? Or I just bought set 11. What am I going to play? Well, believe it or not, Dark Broly is this entire set. Dark Broly is literally a combination out of maybe like the entire Unison Warrior series. Like, yeah. The, yeah. All the, like maybe, you know, not as much set 10, but set 11, it has like a couple good cards. Set 12, it has a couple good cards. Like, even, draft box six, yeah, which draft is, box I, six. I consider that part of like, because yeah. they design it in mind. Obviously, draft box six, like it had the yellow skillless support from set 11. So I consider it, comes it out like, of proximity. So that counts. Yeah. yeah. And like, they had the yeah. red king pick stuff. It makes sense. Yeah. And it was like a progression of like, like, here's how you build the deck going as a sets go. Here, pick a card here, pick a card here from the lineage of sets. Yeah, it makes so, sense. So so I I feel like this might be me stretching or whatever reaching. A lot of Dragon Ball players came over from card games like Yu-Gi-Oh! where there's heavy archetypes and people like their archetypes and how they play. 
Um, I don't believe a lot of Magic players transitioned over to Dragon Ball. I think the large community. I, I am one of those people. Um, yeah, I came from Magic. But but Magic does have the tribal decks too, where they care about the specific types, and that is another fan favorite type of thing. So when we get these decks that are like pretty theme heavy, archetype heavy, Dark Broly, we play a bunch of Dark Brolies. It's easy. You can go to the card search. You can look up Dark Broly character tag, see what all goes into it. It's not hard to understand what the goal of the deck is. When you see a good stuff deck, it can be a little unintuitive to try to figure out what its game plan is and try to how to win. Um, I think that's what maybe turns some players off from the idea of those decks. They might find them boring. They don't have a flashy play that they really build up to, kind of like how Red Broly builds up to the SR. Dark Broly goes into, I guess, they just keep playing beaters. Green Go Tanks plays their Go Tanks SRs and Ultimates their Unison. Um, there's there's a build up in those, and the good stuff decks like the um, like with Mecha, they just do good stuff and like outvalue the opponent and that i feel is like what can lead some people to not enjoy those type of games i can agree with that i think that it's a very that's a good assessment like i'm when i played magic i did love i i love the goblin archetype mm -hmm. um and i love the uh infect archetype infect was actually the deck that i piloted the most because i liked certain i liked alternate win cons and archetypes that's why i loved janemba so much um Here, that's up. <laughs> I also I'm, played Storm I'm and think an one of the player, but he takes forty five minutes to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can we count to ten, Cam? <laughs> Still waiting. <laughs> he can't even say nothing about it. <laughs> Look, all I'm He's saying is that I point. agree, and it makes sense because. Now I've lost my train of thought. There's no conductor. You know what? I think uh, I think on that note, <laughs> I think we can get ready to wrap this up. So I guess Simon, take it away. Um, does anybody have any closing thoughts? Anything they want to say? Um, anything they feel that they wanted to say during the episode that got left out? I feel like we covered a bunch of stuff from the tournament kits to um, the PPG event. Uh, the collector box, just a bunch of different things. Uh, maybe in future podcasts, we'll be a little bit more streamlined with topics, but we had a lot of stuff to talk about today. There was quite a few events that had happened and things we needed to talk about, and I feel like we did a pretty good job at covering all of them. Buyouts um, are real. <clears throat> buyouts <throat> are indeed real. Um, so the Demigra Secret Rare right now is $90. It got bought out. There's only three listings left. I got one signed by you in my collection. I hate it because I had it earlier. I could have bought it for 30. <laughs> the, if Isaiah. you are an L1 judge, you shouldn't be getting packs. You should still get a set of cards. You shouldn't have to randomize your stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Disconnected. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Once again, we have an affiliate link down below. Use it to purchase any of your card game goods. Really great, helps us out, no cost to you, really easy to use, um, can be used for anything on TCG Player. Use it to buy any of the cards we talked about today or to pre-order future products. Um, that's it from us. We're the Card Guys. Once again, thanks for listening to the podcast. Have a great night. Peace out. Have a good night.